Welcome, everybody. This is the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV Network, restoring vitality to you and the planet. I'm your co-host, Scott Patton, and joining us, as usual, is Life Enthusiast Health Coach Martin Batella. Hey, Martin, how are you doing? Greetings, Scott. Um, I'm good. I'm also sad because um, one of the people that I admired a lot, or at least had a lot of respect for, uh, Anthony Bourdain, just left and I've always enjoyed his uh, TV musings and I thought what a wonderful guy and I'm not the only person who's like oh my god what happened uh, this is this is not a good thing when you lose somebody very creative and somebody who's impacted a lot of people yeah the world is mourning him for sure mm -hmm. yeah I've seen a lot of posts from people who like I follow friends who are like really expressing their dismay and disappointment. I'm from some perspective, I'm not terribly surprised because I've watched Anthony or Tony get less and less healthy. Like over the years that he's been up and online, which is about 10 years, he has aged pretty quickly and he has admitted to taking, uh, um, cholesterol lowering substances which is a really really not clever idea because it messes with the inflammation in your body like cholesterol is actually the substance that causes that lowers inflammation it also is the basis of many hormones and it also is the uh, substance of which your brain is made mm. so when you take pharmaceutical drugs that are messing with that, you're causing physiological changes that are not always for the better. Right, so you could be taking it to look after one problem and causing a um, number of other problems, is what I hear you saying. Oh, absolutely, side effects is that classic issue with pharmaceutical drugs. And right. in, in the case of Lipitor, which I think he was on, uh, the side effect number one is uh, co coenzyme Q10 and vitamin B12. And if you're not supplementing with those two, then you're causing yourself fatigue and uh, brain trouble. So Martin, when we've talked about depression before, uh, I have a son who's depressed. Uh, a lot of times people say, well, this is like a mental problem and it, that may be part of it. They may, some people say there can be genetics and that may be part of it. But there's also an aspect to it that has to do with what you're putting in your mouth in terms of, of liquids and in terms of food. And I think it's important we kind of talk a little bit about that as well. Yeah, there are two physiological issues. One of them is chronic inflammation, and the other one is the pH balance in the, uh, I guess, the body fluids. Um, here's what happens. As if we're in balance, which the uh, fluids should be at about 7.35 on the pH scale, and the, by the fluids, I mean your blood will be maintained between 7.32 and 7.37 very, what's the word, vigorously, at the expense of everything else. Your lymph, on the other hand, can swing much wider. So anyway, as a person becomes more acidic, the first thing you notice about them is that they become less patient. And if you drift further into acidity, they become louder, argumentative. And if you push it even further, they become uncontrollably ragey. Road rage is a fairly extreme expression of an acidic state of being. As you drift toward alkalinity, the alkalinity, first thing you procrastinate. Then you... Um, become indecisive, and then despondent, and then depressed. So a depression is a fairly extreme expression of physiological state of being overly alkaline. And what affects these states is actually the food intake, the major food sources, which is the starches, fats, and proteins. And it's the balance between fats and proteins on one side and the carbohydrates on the other. And they push one up or one down. 
And the difficult part is this. If your uh, physiology is one of the ox oxidizer, like slow oxidizer, fast oxidizer, they are um, pushed toward alkalinity by fats and proteins and pushed into acidity by carbohydrates. So you and I could sit down and have a meal together and afterwards I'll be laying on the couch snoozing and you'll be throwing glasses at the wall. It could be like that. You and it I could be extreme, right? Well, but <laughs> I'm not saying you and I personally, I'm just saying two people could eat the same food and have completely different alkalinity results of it, right? Right. So to finish the thought, if you're an autonomic dominant, then you're, that the whole thing switches and carbohydrates are alkalizing and uh, fats and proteins are acidifying. And most of the uh, theory books about nutrition pretend that everybody is an autonomic. That's the common way. But a lot right. of people in the hunter, native, whatever, uh, well, many people are oxidizers, actually. So... For me, so this is why this is why an Al uh, Aiken's diet would work for some people and be terrible for others. And then, you know, the beach ball diet or the twenty bananas a day diet is really good for some people and really bad for other people. Yes, exactly that. Because if you are already alkaline, and if uh, carbs make you more alkaline still, then the grapefruit diet or drinking too much is going to send you into a horrendous depression. And so for, for the person who's already too alkaline, they need to find the foods that are going to make them less so. Like for me, I wake up overly acidic. So if I don't manage my foods, I'll become a real jerk. So I need to eat the right stuff. And for me, the right stuff is actually carbs. So I eat fruit for breakfast and that actually sets me to be a fairly sunny disposition. If I fail to do that, I'm bound to cause a road rage event on my way to work. I was going to say the last three times I've had a banana, I've had a nap within 10 minutes. <laughs> that is because you, my friend, wake up already alkaline. Yeah. And because you're of the same type, you can take two drinks or a large banana or a piece of bread and goodbye world. That's right. I'm just God, I'm just history. Like it's so funny. So thank you know. Thankfully, you know, you and I have been talking about this for many, many years, and I'm and I'm more and more aware of these things. Like oh, like when something happens and it's unusual, like you know, needing a nap in the middle of the afternoon when I haven't had one for two months, and it's like, well, okay, so what did I eat? Oh yeah, I had that banana, or I had something else. So then I start to identify. These are the foods that, you know, will put me to sleep. So I can't get to sleep at night. I have a banana at 11 o'clock and I'm out, right? Correct. So make a speculation. So, for example, Ernst Hemingway, who was a classic parasympathetic, the more he drank, the more depressed he got until he finally couldn't stand it anymore and used a shotgun to end it. I don't know what Tony Bourdain was, whether he was alkalized by starches or whether he was alkalized by fats, whichever it was, but it could have been one of those things that if he, if he only knew what we just covered, he could have actually managed his moods. You can shift it just enough that it's not such a problem. And crazy enough, I talked to a pharmacist he said that 75% of prescriptions that he fills are for mood-altering drugs. 75% of all prescriptions that cross this guy's counter. Either people want to be less anxious, or they want to be less depressed, or less angry, or something. Or not feel. So, anyway... As far as managing this, so manage it with balance of foods. Well, actually, I wanted to throw in some numbers. You know, um, in America, there are about 900, and, pardon me, 850 deaths per 100,000 of population every year. So that means about 2.5 million people will uh, die 
in on a given year. Um, also, so out of the two and a half million people, there are 45,000 suicides. So the number is that there are 13 suicides per 100,000 of population every year. That is awful. Now, interestingly, in Canada, for example, it's 11 and a half. So that's 10% less. I don't know why Canadians are 10% less likely to use a suicide as a solution, but so it is. Maybe it's the uh, less easy access to guns because guns lead to a very successful suicide. Yeah. Ah. But anyway, the point of that is, so that's about one and a half percent, right? One and a half percent of all exits from the world are by choice, by suicide. That's a lot, really. It's, it's one of the major illnesses, if you will. I mean, it, it, to, to give it in perspective, right? 50% of all deaths are cardiac, heart, and circulation. A third is cancer. So that's, that's five and three. That's 80% of all deaths are cancer and, and heart. Those two are inflammatory conditions. Cancer is a condition that is the result of not enough oxygen at the tissue. Right. And oxygen management, we just, um, how do I put that? Oxygen management is also pH dependent. When your pH is off, there, the capacity of your blood and your lymph to carry oxygen to the cells is diminished exponentially. So if you manage your pH, you also will manage the chance of your cells starving of oxygen. And the other one, the, uh, heart disease, well, that's an inflammatory problem. That's usually, that's dietary issue. That's eating the wrong stuff. Uh, there's a video on YouTube about solar storms and, uh, and suicides, co coincidence. They sent me this link to the video that says solar storms, when they're up, is the rate of suicide, suicides is up. Mm. However, there was no solar storm in these last three, four, five, six days whenever this event took place. I mean, the day... We're recording it two days after Tony uh, Bourdain died. Right. There was no solar storm. So you can't use that as an excuse. Well, what I'm saying is that the more important thing is what you're doing to yourself physiologically. You can nutrate away a physiological problem. This uh, manic depressive or bipolar has two poles. Some people are swinging between the two. Some people are just on one side, like depressive, and the other ones are manic all the time. Some are slow switching, some are fast switching. Some will switch twice a day. Some will switch uh, two weeks out of a month, they're one type, and two weeks out of the month, they're the other type. And yet, we have these supplements um, that have been designed specifically for this, to balance the neurotransmitters. When you supply the amino acids, minerals, vitamins, and uh, a few plant substances into the body, you will actually end up balancing the neurotransmitters such that this problem goes away. It becomes manageable. Your mood. So there's hope. I mean, it's it's a problem, and like most problems, there's a solution. We were taught that in math, right? You get a bunch of numbers and times and as and whatever and what's the answer what's the solution at the end and there is a solution you just have to take the time to find it and implement it right it's interesting that you use the ho that you use the word hope the company in canada is called true hope mm -hmm. this makes the product called empower plus we distribute it under the q sciences the american label q sciences empower plus anybody who's got a um, brain imbalance should be on it and if you're at all interested in <laughs> you know relieving your depression relieving your anxiety relieving all of these emotions and stuff that are not that are negative they're not helping you they're 
they're hindering you in living your life to the fullest, then read the story of True Hope. It's an absolutely fascinating book. Uh, it just totally blew my mind and has had a huge impact on how I look at a lot of things in our, in our society, particularly when it comes to healthcare. And so what I want to explain here is that the methods that we use at Life Enthusiast, functional medicine by principle, root cause resolution, is totally different from the methods used by the mainstream medical system. They focus on symptom management. They are not interested in causes, they're interested in simply manipulating the symptoms which is very different. We are not trying to arm wrestle with the symptoms. We're just trying to restore normal functioning through support of the cellular function in the body, which means remove toxicity, reduce malnutrition, get rid of stagnation and uh, resolve trauma. Those are the four principles. You will hear us talk about it in our previous podcasts that they hold true for all chronic conditions that, um, that decrease quality of life. And that's all I have to say. I think on the topic, other than I miss Tony Bourdain already, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of his videos, introducing all the wonderful food, which by the way, was probably his undoing because he was just such a, I don't know what to call it, food enthusiast. He would eat anything and everything in any combination. Uh, no rationality about that at all. He would just go for it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I only wish I could have had the time with him to show him, explain to him, teach him how to do better nutrition. Yeah, how to manage it. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, this is one of those things where the first step is to admit that you have a problem, you know, and then what is the problem and then what you need to do to fix it, right? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, sadly, well, and that's a part of the problem of being, you know, depressed is you already said, before you get depressed, you go through procrastination. So, I'm not going to do the things that I should be doing to figure out how to no longer be depressed. Yeah, once I'm depressed, all I want is just pull the um, lid over me and never never crawl, never crawl out of the hole. I don't want the world to, I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to interact with anything. I don't want to change anything. I'm done. Yeah. And one of the things that you've said often to me is when, you're di when you find yourself deep in a hole, the first thing to do is stop digging. <laughs> <laughs> but you need to know what that is in physiological sense, right? That's right. That's right. So if your metabolic type is uh, autonomic, then you need to stop eating carbohydrate stuff. But if you're, if you're the oxidizer, then it's the opposite. You need to eat more carbohydrate stuff and less fat. Yeah. So Martin, if somebody wanted to know more about how they could discover their metabolic typing and what sort of foods are going to make them more alkaline and depressed and what sort of foods are going to make them uh, more acidic and angry, uh, how could they do that? We are called Life Enthusiast. The website is www.life, L-I-F-E, dash, enthusiast, that's E-N-T-H-U-S-I-A-S-T, dot com. You can call us, 866-543-3388. Great. Thank you for joining us, everybody. We're really happy that you're coming on this journey with us. If you've got any questions, make sure that you send them over to us. We'd be happy to answer them in a future podcast or a YouTube show or on Facebook and uh, uh, but you've been watching and listening to the Life Enthusiast online radio and TV network restoring vitality to you and the planet see you next time bye bye <laughs>